All right, that brings us down to the last little bit of parts that I recommend inspecting and not replacing, if you can. This is the rear bearing retainer for the transmission. Your rear bearing fits inside here. This fits inside the case. So, if you will check it, with your case to make sure that it fits snug and that your bearing will fit snugly inside it without rattling around that part's ready to be reused your oil slinger some transmissions don't even use this part however you can see this one's got a little bit of wear here where it was riding against the gear so see how it's been been bent out a little bit if you're gonna put this part in I recommend clearancing it right here let me get one that's not clearanced here's here's a replacement that has not been clearanced notice this front edge right here I recommend trimming that off like you see on this one because that makes it much easier to install and it really doesn't change the effectivity of it much at all um, the later model transmissions, they don't even put this in there. They leave it out altogether. If you choose to remove this part out of your transmission, make sure to seal up the holes with bolts. Um, you can just simply put the bolts back in with uh, nylon nuts on the inside to lock it down and put some seal on them and they should be good. This part, I have a ton of these laying around here. This is the spacer for the inside of the cluster gear. It should look like this. It shouldn't be all corroded and nasty looking. Um, as long as it looks like this, you should be fine. You should be able to reuse it. Reverse idler gear. It seems like almost every one of these that I've ever taken out looked great along the edges, along the teeth. I mean, it's got some wear, but we showed you earlier how that really doesn't matter. But what I see is that the bushing itself inside is all chewed up. Okay, can you see how this one is chewed up inside? It's all along this edge. It, the bore itself is good, but it's like something got trapped in this area right here. So I do not intend to reuse this part. It's chewed up on the inside, and I don't want to take a chance on it. It does fit nicely on the shaft. Shaft is fine. Okay, but it, uh, just not going to use it because it's chewed up inside. Then comes a bearing retainer. Okay, this fits on the front, holds the front bearing in place, and uh, as long as it looks like this one, it should be fine. Uh, I've seen some though where it was all gouged out inside here in this area. I've seen them where they were damaged here. I've seen them where they're cracked along here. So inspect it good, make sure it's fine. Um, this is where your throwout bearing, let me grab one. Here's one with a throwout bearing on it. Your throwout bearing rides on that area. You can see how that could cause wear. Okay, this is the wrong spring on this one, by the way. Um, but that's what it's for. Okay, and uh, so look at this area, make sure it's not damaged. And I do re re recommend replace, this is the spring that's supposed to be on there. So you compare that to what you just saw you can tell that definitely was the wrong spring. All right. Um, check this ball. Make sure the ball isn't chewed up. It, that's where your shift fork is, uh, sorry, clutch fork is going to ride. This does pull out. Okay. It's held in by the tension of the clutch fork on it. So uh, if it is chewed up, you can need to replace it. One last thing. The counter shaft for the cluster gear. Okay. You can measure it. Easy way to tell if you have damage, first off, is to rub your hand up and down. And if you don't feel any wear, you're probably pretty good. But what you can do is take a measurement in the center here. And whatever your measurement is here in the center should be the same all the way around here and here. Do not go out on this end. This end is much larger. This is the large press fit that's tapped into the case that holds it locked in place. Don't move out on that. It's much larger. Okay? But if you take your measurement here, it should be the same as out here and right here. 
Okay? If you see, see or feel wear there, you have to replace this. I recommend replacing one that's hardened. All right, one way to tell if your shaft is hardened is you can take a file and see if it will cut into it. If it won't cut into it, it's a good hardened shaft. If you buy a shaft and they probably and they charge you $12 for it, it's probably not a hardened shaft. Um, so aside from that, everything else that's in the transmission, front and rear bearings, all the uh, snap rings, all the needle bearings, the washers, I recommend replacing all of them every time you rebuild the transmission. All right? I think that's enough information to get you through. Thanks.